They made him commit suicide. They're like, you're making our society unstable with your truth. I'm like, hey, I'm a tall, skinny, goofy looking white guy. Or I'd yeah. say something like, I look like Brad Pitt. Most of the time when a dude grabbed you, he was trying to kill you. So I'm driving through this neighborhood to a lady that you know never picked up the phone. When I get to her house, I see her outside and she's like 68 years old, just mowing the lawn. And I was like, dude, this is fabulous. Here in my garage. We got a new guest today. I like to call him Wiley Coyote, but his name is Wiley. We're gonna be talking about how by 24, he built a life insurance company. They take leads, 100 sales reps, all phone, closing deals, closing 30 million of commissions a year. You're making close to a mil a year as the owner because you paid out to the, to the reps. We're gonna talk about jacuzzi versus cold sauna, steam room, the four different ways you can shock the body. We're gonna be talking about manifestation, multiverse, Alaska's full of murderers, the greatest investment of all time, why you get laughed at in your lifetime, but then when you die, oftentimes people will realize you are a genius. So welcome mm -hmm. to the show. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You said everybody, your name's Wiley, but people call you Wiley Coyote. Yep. Lean into that. I saw that break dancer girl that's getting all this flack on social media and she's did a long video crying and all this. Yep. I was like, you got to lean into it. You have to own it. People stop making fun of you. She goes, you know what? I just did a good run day. I was kind of goofy. I guess I thought I was better than I was and ha ha and lean into it. Do some memes, go yeah. on the, go on the tonight show, be funny about it. the second she's bucking up against a tidal wave of people hating. Like I, I've had people hate on me. H3H3 did a hater video. I was like, come to the house, man. And I set it up with like lawyers walking <laughs> around in like Illuminati stuff. And people were like, yeah, now I like Ty. I just leaned it. I'm like, yeah. who cares? You know? Uh, yeah. So for you, like Wiley Coyote is like memorable. People told Arnold Schwarzenegger to change his name because they're like, it's too hard to pronunciate when he moved here into LA. He, his, he lives down the road from me here. 1970s, like, your name's too hard. But that turned out to be the differentiator in a saturated world. You're in a saturated world. Big time. Yeah. Well, no, one of my buddies, he's like the type of guy that he wears like very just like strange, you know, like outfits. Yeah. I'm like, why do you do that? And he's like, it's called the peacock. Effect, yeah, yeah, peacock. Right? So but that second, one can backfire too. Well, yeah, too it's, weird. It's like hit or miss. Like yes. how far do you go down that path? Yes. But I'm saying Wiley Coyote, I would just be, I wouldn't always walk around. And be like, hello, my name is Wiley Coyote. But I might put it on my Instagram and be like, Wiley, <laughs> quote, Coyote, and then your last name, Hawkins, right? Hawkins, yeah. So I'd be like, Wiley, on your Insta, because then someone quit strolling through, who's this dude? They're going to remember the Coyote. They're going to remember Coyote. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know about, yeah, some dudes teach like pickup artists. It's like, okay, you can wear a flamethrower on your head. Yeah, you're gonna go to a club and people are gonna notice you, but no sane <laughs> no one's woman's going gonna no say some women will be interested in you, but not the sane ones. Yeah. Some dudes will remember you from business networking and want to hang out with you, but not the sane ones. So you, you gotta stand out in an authentic way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So on the phones when I was like booking appointments, I would say it's like Wiley, like, you know, Wiley Coyote. I'm like, hey, I'm a tall, skinny, goofy looking white guy. Or I'd yeah. say something like, I look like Brad Pitt. And right. I don't at all. Yeah, yeah. You know, just so they're like actually looking for me and they're kind of curious about like, yeah. who's this salesman going to be coming to my door, you know, yep. tomorrow. So you've got, you're from North Carolina. That's where I went to high school. Yep. I started in life insurance. I started lead gen in 2001, built my first funnel. People are talking about funnels now. I'm like, you're late to the game. And you're gen, so you've got, you did 30 million in commissions generated, paid out to your, you got a hundred people working for you. Yeah, a hundred. How old are you? I'm 24. 24. So you, yeah. you've been ramping the recruiting. How many people, what's the goal? So I mean, my goal is, is, so when I was 20, I was going to college and I was working a full-time job, like just trying to get by. And I just yeah. felt like I was like, dang, I just feel lost. Like, is this really the path? Yeah. And so I'm originally from a small town uh, near Aspen, Colorado okay. called Basalt. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you know it. Nope. And I worked for a guy that ran a really high-end country club up there. And I was like, hey, how much money do you make if you don't mind me asking? He's like 350000 a year. I was like, okay, not bad. And I was like, how long did it take you to get there? And he was like 35, 40 years. And I was like, this is the direction I don't want to head. Right. But I just didn't know anybody that could introduce me to like sales or business opportunities. 
So I was living with four guys at the time. And uh, one of my buddies comes home and he's like buzzing off the wall. Like he's just like vibrant. His name's Garrett. And I'm like, gee, like, why are you so excited? You know, like you just meet the love of your life. Like you just get laid, like talk to me. And he's like, dude, I just made a thousand bucks in an hour. And I was like, are you selling dope again? <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, no. Like, yeah. And I was like, well, what are you doing? He's like, dude, I'm selling life insurance. And I was like, what is that? You know, because it's not a sexy thing. Right. Right. Yeah. And he breaks it down. He's like, you get warm leads. You know, you just go out there, book an appointment, go to their house, ask them what they need. Essentially, he breaks it all down. I'm like, okay, well, shoot. If I can start making two deals a week. Yeah. Like, that's going to 4X my income. Yeah. yeah. And so. What were you doing then? I mean, it was part-time work at a hotel. I was making like maybe a thousand bucks, maybe 500 with tips. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't A month? A, a month. Well, yeah. I remember I'm a full-time college student at that time. Okay. And so I get introduced to the sales and then first month, what I put up, like 14K and deposits. It was like right around like nine. I was like, all right, this is good. Next month, I like pretty much just buckled in, put up 47K. And then I was like, this is it. Mm. Like I made it and then started, you know, recruiting, hiring everyone. So, yeah. But yeah, I think my goal, I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, like there's so many people out there just that might not have the hard or soft skills they need, but like have enough just grit to kind of, yeah. you know, plug into a system. And like really what we got is just plug and play. Yeah. Like I tell people, if you can read and write, like with our leads, 30% of people buy naturally. Yeah, so as yeah. long as you're willing to make 300 calls a day, yep. like I can, you know, I have a guarantee with like most of the people we hire within 90 days, I'll teach you how to make 15K a month. Yeah. And I'll teach you how to sell. So they got to call 300 dials. Oh yeah. Do they do you use a power dialer or they're literally just one by one dial? So it's a combination of everything like yeah. with the CRM and the drip text, but I would say most of our guys just use their phone. What CRM do you like? Uh, we use Ringy. Ringy? R-I-N-G-Y? Yeah. I it's, use my own CRM, but I'm always interested in what people are doing. I'm, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, my next phase is to figure out like, you know, grabbing things and making them more in-house. But yeah. what I'm good at is just like the basics. So, you use Ringy and you use SMS a lot? Texting? Yeah. So if somebody fill, so you got a Facebook agency that runs your ads for you, how many, how many leads are you generating a, a month or a day or a week or whatever? I would probably say a hundred thousand a month. That many? Yeah. So we're a ground, like we're a hundred thousand leads or yeah. you mean clicks? No leads. Because okay. so most you're giving of our, each guy how many leads if you have 100 salespeople? It depends on what they buy. So, our, so here's a good metric. So our average guy spends 1400 a week on leads. Ah, okay, average, you make that. They pay for their own leads. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. And so they spend 1400 a week on leads. Okay. And then our average guy puts up around 8K in sales. And after like, you know, a couple of people cancel and the cost of leads, they make 5K a week. Gotcha. 5K uh, a week. A week. Gotcha. Yeah, they're full time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you got guys be doing 20. What's your best guy doing? Our best guy is doing like 90,000. And this is just sales. Yeah, it's yeah. 90 grand a month. And then what do you figure? How much is going to lead costs? How much is he putting in his pocket? He probably right. only spends like 3K a week. So 12. What makes him so good? What's the diff? I'm always interested in because like sales is like, because I have big sales teams too. And it's like, why is this guy always better than that person? It's like, so what do you think it is? Well, is it like tech? They have better tech? They have better... One, I think... Well, what's interesting about like running a sales team is I felt like I know who's going to be really good. Really? And then sometimes people just... Surprise you. Surprise yeah. me. So now I'm just like, look, like I feel like the biggest indicator for people is speed of how quickly people get tasks done that you're asking them to do. Okay. Right? And so with this guy, his name is Nate, and uh, he's been through so many ups and downs in the business that I think he just made a decision of one day, like, I know how to make and, you know, produce at a really high level. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he is the most consistent, but his sales process is just simple. Yeah. Like when a client says, hey, I'm looking for this, this, and this, he doesn't overcomplicate it. He's just going to get straight to the point, you know, build a little bit more of a need and then close right there. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to this lead, Jay. It can't be 100,000 because that'd be 30,000 a day leads. Yeah, that's probably not right. So Maybe 10,000. So yeah. I'm not in charge of the leads for our group. Okay. One of our managers is. Yeah, yeah. But I mean. But how many leads does a person get per week? So with 1,400, you'll get about 500 leads. That many? Okay. Yeah, because you are. So they're kind of low quality, like high volume leads. Yeah. It's a ground and pound. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So let's say you get 500 leads. 
are you are you generating is it being generated from facebook ads or are you buying lists no they're being generated from our ads okay and yeah. mostly Facebook or YouTube or Snap? No, or? mostly Facebook. Gotcha. So it's yeah. like, need life insurance, click here. Yeah, it's boom. like the most basic ad. Hey, you yeah. need life insurance, boom, yes. click here, fill out a couple of things. Gotcha. So people are not paying much for the ads. And they're getting a ton of ads. And what's the close rate? 500, they end up closing how many? So I'll do it within 100. So if you had 100 leads in front of you for a yeah. day, you're going to work for, let's just say, 10 hours, right? Yep. 60 people are not going to answer the phone because if you yes. got a call right now and it was a random number, like, yes, we're not picking up. You yeah. know, if it's me, it's zero percent. Never. Pickup. Yeah. 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 And so then you got 40 people to speak with out of the next 40. Let's just say 30 have objections and you can't yeah. even get into it. So then you pitch to 10. And when I mean this, like if you like you could not mess it up and you'll close two people. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people just need life insurance. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, we're guaranteed two things in life. Taxes and death. Yeah. Right. And so it's a very emotional sale. And there's a lot of people that have just gone through something where, you know, a friend, husband, yes. whoever it is, passes away. And they're like, I saw how hard it was yeah. to for me to deal with this. I never want to put my family. Are you doing this. insurance with underwriting or like no. instant? Simplified issue. Simplified issue. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. quick. Oh, it's like more expensive, quick, boom, you get paid. Yeah. And so when somebody Going back to just sales, because a lot of people will follow me are like, what's the secret to sales? Sales, sales, sales. Do you design the script? Or it's you a let combination. people freewheel? So I think in the beginning, I think it's good to have like a foundation and almost like body parts, right? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, for me, it's just like four sections. Like it's just credibility, you know, building the pain, setting structure, and then closing. So that's your four? Yeah. Credibility. So look, walk me through a quick, let's play a. Role you play. want to role play? You call me. Just give me. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm like, yeah. hello. All right, ring, ring. Yep. Hey, this is Wiley. Or excuse me. Hey, Wiley is this Coyote. Time? <laughs> hey, this is Wiley Coyote. This Wiley I got. I, dude, I got to roll with that now because <laughs> like so many. I'm people, like this dude's. This guy's schizophrenic. He had a <laughs> like, who psychotic is break with reality. Or they're gonna be like, all right, is this a prank? Yeah, yeah. All right. No, anyways, it's ring, Wiley. ring. Ty. Yo. Hey, Ty. This is Wiley right here in North Carolina. So look, I just found your little application you sent in through Facebook. It was the one you're at just looking for some basic life insurance quotes. Yep. Just to make sure I got this right, I have your birthday is 1010 of 1956. Is that right? It's not right, but we'll do it for the role playing. <laughs> 1956 is my mom. <laughs> so it's right? Yeah. All right, perfect. And then I have your beneficiary down as Vanessa. Yep. All right, perfect. Well, hey, my job's super simple. All I got to do today is go through a quick eligibility. It takes like five minutes. Do you have a pen and paper? I do. I got my phone. Let me write it down. Sweet. And then I'll give them my credentials. And then from there. So, but walk me through that. Like, how does that sound? Do you Yeah, go, so like, perfect. I'm like, so write down my name. It's Wiley, just like Wiley Coyote. Okay. W-Y-L-I-E. And then last name's Hawkins. My uh, insurance producer number is boom, 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 boom. And then right after that, they write it down. And I'll just go, so perfect. So are you like most of the families that so I So you use with? for credibility just that you have a producer number. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, because in America, you have to, if you didn't know, you have to be go through a little government process. Yeah. And I feel like the biggest things that I noticed, like being in the field and then now like selling over the phone. So I don't actively sell anymore. Yeah. But the biggest hardship I went through is just like building trust. Yeah. yeah. Your people are almost all on the phone, not in person. Every single one of them. Gotcha. And the close rate gone down a little bit? No, I would say it's gone up. Yeah, because you can just talk to more people too. Yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking about it. And like, so I was uh, talking to somebody back there. And so we used to drop mail in different counties. Yes. And so, you know, I've lived in like 30 different states and it was great. Like I got to really see what America is. Yes. Truly. And when I switched over to telesales, I was like, man, this is going to be a lot harder to sell it. But then yes. what I realized is you have 10 times more at bats. Is that the uh, whoop? watch yeah, yeah do you like it it's pretty good i've tried the aura tried the whoop you know what's funny there's like 20 things the two things i like better about the ring and two things i like better about whoop i wish they would just use the, each other's company like the ceo needs to use the other one and then you could just add the two things that i like better about ring like ring shows your steps on the app why would whoop not show your steps they it's don't show you your steps no not in an easy place. And it, it can just connect. If they don't want to do, I mean, it's insane. So eat your own dog food. These tech companies out here, I'm telling you. The CEO of Zoom doesn't use Zoom. I think he must use Google Meets or something. Because if I was him and I started using my own company, Zoom, 
And I noticed that when people join late, they can't see all the past comments. That's a dumb feature. So when mm. people join, if I join my company meeting 10 minutes into it, every message, they don't have a toggle button that says show old messages. Right. So I'm like, does the owner of Zoom use Zoom? Does the owner of Whoop use also your competitors? Then you could be like, wait a second, it's nice to know steps. So rent aura shows steps. I like that better. Yeah. Um, whoop. I like how they display your, your restorative sleep better. Okay. You so, know? so real quick on yeah. this. So the reason why I haven't gotten it is because if you look down at your phone, uh, however they track it and it shows that you had bad sleep, I feel like it would just get no. me in this weird framework of like, I'm not going to excel that well today because I don't sleep like a ton. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think measuring yourself has some downsides, but the upsides outnumber the down. So yes, theoretically, if you suck at sleep, a whoop or an aura ring starts to make you depressed, but it could also motivate you to be right. like, well, what if I got a good score, make you competitive to go, yo, I'm just, cause this one whoop is pretty good about saying, here's when you should go to bed. The best thing about whoop, they give that's you a very time. smart. Yeah, it was suggested, but whoop measures sleep debt. Whoever did that, this is a, this is a, or as a Finnish company, I'm not sure. I think this might be an American company. That was a genius idea. So the body stores sleep debt. So if you're 30 minutes short, you can make up for it a couple of days later. Um, eventually you can't make up, you can't make yeah, up yeah. for bad sleep two years ago. So the cool thing is that is a genius feature that I did not see Aura do. So Aura should do that. Whoop. The thing that Aura does better, it shows like a, I feel like Aura is a tad bit more accurate in the sense that it has. It's like uh, right on the pulse. Yeah, it's, you know? it, yeah, things like that. But Whoop is nicer for safety when you're at the gym. This thing would tear off, whereas if a ring catches on something, it could be a pain. <laughs> Literal pain in your finger could get ripped off. <laughs> so, I mean, they're both, to me, Aura is a pretty good company, and, and Whoop's not bad either. So, yeah, but I wouldn't do that, man. You know what? You're thinking too much black and white. Test it. People start anticipating. Well, I don't know if I would like a whoop or an aura. I'm like, try it. Why not? Yeah, because maybe it doesn't have that reaction. Maybe you go, well, this means this is driving home the fact that I don't sleep. How much you sleep, do you think? I play seven hours. Not bad. When you sleep, do you sleep completely through the night? Typically, unless I drink a ton of water. Yeah, you got to stop drinking like six hours before you sleep. That's you sleep, tough though. Not really. If you sleep at like 10, you should wind, you should drink a ton. Like let's say you go to bed at 10 and let's say you sleep. You should really be in bed nine hours and you'll sleep. Actual sleep will be about eight hours because usually you, you move around more yeah. than you think and you wake up even if you don't know. So you go to bed at 10, you sleep nine hours. So you're up at seven. Boom. You start hitting the water hard. Early. Yeah. Then by four, you just drink a little sips. You should drink half your water during the gym. So your strongest five hours after you wake up when you're lifting weights. So if you wake up at seven, you hit, if it's a weight day, you hit the weights at 12, you drink half your water in your pre, I drink a huge pre-workout during the workout post. So in that three hour window, pre drink. So by three, you drink, yeah, because sleeping, drinking remotely close, you gotta pee. Yeah, that's interesting. Are you a big supplement guy? I only as insurance because, you know, it's interesting. I went to chat GPT on the farm and I designed, I asked it. I'll do it right here. This, I don't have time to do this chat GPT, but I got, I got Wiley Coyote here, not the cartoon on my podcast at the Beverly Hills uh, spot, my place here. And we're talking about, do you need supplements? And my opinion is like, they protect you in case you're not getting it, but you should try to get it 100% through food. So design for me three meals with two snacks that gives me at least 100% of all the known macros and micros. At least 100%. We'll use for now, even though it's not the best scale, the US government, 100%. Is that possible to do if I wanna say, only eat 2,500 calories a day. You'll see, you can absolutely do it. You just have to have an intelligent diet. You need to have a very diverse diet. You have Watch. to have good questions. 
However, it requires careful planning. For example, if you wake up, you have oatmeal with mixed berries and almond butter, 400 cal. Lunch, grilled mm. salmon with quinoa, quinoa and steamed broccoli, one tablespoon olive oil. Um, if you, for dinner, chicken stir fry with brown rice, mixed vegetables, bell peppers, carrots, snap peas. You have Greek yogurt with walnuts and honey, high in calcium, protein, 300. Then you hit an apple with peanut butter. Now you go through here. It didn't quite do it, so... Well, I actually did it. That's 100%. And then the reason you got to have supplements is because the soil, I have big farms, organic farms for years. And the soil in an ideal world is fully uh, fertile. It has all the minerals. Plants basically eat a combination of dirt, right? And dirt is made up of carbon and minerals mixed together. So if you have the right minerals in the soil, it also has water soluble things like nitrites, which is like protein for us. So like mm. nitrogen. So if you have the right NPK, nitrogen, phosphate, potassium, then the soil also needs boron and sulfur and all these things, just like the human body. If you had that soil perfect, then when you eat an apple from an apple tree growing there, it would be loaded. Assuming it's not a hybrid apple that has been hybridized to just be big and pretty and lost all its nutritional value. So the reason you should have supplements is because... You should try to not need supplements, but you probably need it for insurance because some people they're eating that meal they ate that day is a little low on selenium or mm -hmm. boron, or there's even trace minerals we haven't discovered yet. That's why you should throw some kelp on top of everything you eat, which is a plant. Kelp? Icelandic Thorvin kelp we use for our cows, but you, they make food great for humans. Yes, yeah, from the cold waters up near Iceland and seaweed, kelp is a type of seaweed and it's a crazy nutritional. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So since we're on the topic of fitness, so I'm kind of curious. I know that you play basketball. Yeah. You roll ju, uh, jujitsu mm -hmm. and then probably lift weights. I mean, yeah. what's like your actual favorite activity to do? <laughs> if you're like, hey, like, let's go work out after this. Like, what are we doing? I try to not be a weak willed person. Weak willed people have a lot of favorites and a lot of that's that's so I, it's like when you have kids be like, let's not go down because then you're learning to lead by emotions. Right. So you're like, well, I, I, do. I have a friend. It's funny. For 20 years, he's like, I hate bodybuilding, lifting weights. And you know what? Guess how his body ended up looking over 20 years? Awful. Shitty. I'm like, why don't you hate looking bad? That's a better thing to hate. See, people put their priorities wrong. So to me, what you want to do is not let your brain go down the route of what's my favorite. So to me, it's like, what's excellent what's optimal aristotle some people say is the most intelligent person to ever live you know he was the student of plato socrates kind of concept and he said he said you know the purpose of life is virtue but he didn't mean virtue like like bible or right. islam or judaism he meant like excellence so the best thing to ask yourself is like what's the most optimal excellent things to do for health. For me, I built this 150 body. I started just building it for myself. Now I turned it into a brand. Um, I built it across the street at the house because I was a busy entrepreneur. And if you are if you ain't careful on your way to try to make millions, your body, I've seen it with myself, you stop paying attention and just degrades. So like what I did was, okay, what is an optimal schedule that works for a busy human? And I came up with this 150 body. So it's basically based around the fact that humans Right now, Harvard scientists say we can live to 150 right now. That's credible. If you ask, not quack scientists, like real scientists are like, right. oh, we got the tech right now. So what does it take to be young forever? Not really, but till 150 is pretty good. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, heavy weights. And just for male or female, there's too much differentiating. Everything in the world now is like about the battle of the sexes and the genders. I'm like, Fuck it. If you're a homo sapien, okay, homo sapien means wise. That's what the phrase homo sapien means. If you're a wise homo, human, hominoid, then you should do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you lift heavy weights. Obviously, if you're a woman, you don't have, usually have as much twitch muscle, so you're not going to lift as heavy, but heavy for you and anaerobic. So long rests. The goal is not to push the heartbeat up as much. Boom, boom, boom. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the science is in like the best type of cardio in general is not steady state. It's high intensity interval training. 
some steady state is good. Like in the morning, I do fasted cardio mm-hmm. when I'm trying to cut weight like now, and I'll, I swim. That's the best. Walking's good, but psh, swimming. Look at that Michael Phelps body. You look at the swimmers, but it's the swimmers and the sprinters that look the best. The joggers look horrific, even in the Olympics. Way too skinny. Yeah, too skinny. Well, it's funny. So my buddy called me about a year ago, and he's like, hey, me and Zach are signing up for a triathlon. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like, what does it entail? Cause like, I just didn't know anything about that space. He's like, you swim, bike, run. And I was like, dude, I'm not doing that. And he's like, no, you have to do it. I'm like, I'm not doing it. And then he pulls the card. He's like, don't be a bitch. And I'm like, oh, God. like every, <laughs> every time like a guy hears that, you're yeah. like, oh, like now I really have to, you know, think through this. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll do it. And what I started noticing was like, at first I didn't like running, but then I learned to really like yes. it, but swimming. I yes. loved it. And it's yeah. like a rest day for me because like yeah. your body's just moving. You're not getting sore from it. Yep. You know, and you have less joint pain. Number two, you know, temptation to use your phone. So you get like Zen meditative state. Number three, three, no EMFs. What's EMFs? EMFs, electrical magnetic fields, all the Wi-Fi. That's why surfers, I actually commented on some random hmm. Instagram reel or some rando I don't know if he's a biohacker or what. It's like the best, the thing that'll make you live the longest, a million scientific studies show playing tennis and what's called rocket sports. So it's like tennis, badminton, you know, things that you like, uh, paddle ball. Right, right, right. I think the science is bad because richer people do that and richer people live longer, but anti-aging surfer dudes. Surfer guys look young forever. You see 75 year old with a six pack because it's like a bounce exercise but you get in vitamin D because you're in the ocean, not in a gym. A gym, there's no vitamin D hitting your skin. And so I like swimming. Obviously, the ocean's better than a pool because you don't have, you have chlorine. You can do a salt water pool, which is better. Mm-hmm. But you get in vitamin D and no EMFs. So you're out there floating in the water. The water, if you, I have an EMF meter, dude, you can't, that's why I don't like to live in apartments. You get in Wi Fi from every, person's got their router god that'd be crazy to look down and like see that thing just start pinging off on my farm i just did it i shot i put on my snapchat story my emf meter buy a laptop this is why i don't like laptops if you can help it was it three million three million i got a farm in the middle of amish community i went out to my pasture where my horses are alfalfa it went to one it was three million times higher. At, I That's filmed insane. it, put on Snapchat. You can buy them. They're on Amazon. They're $500. I was like, so if you have a laptop, that's why it's better to get a tower, like a desktop tower, stick it far away, like three feet away, and just run the monitors to your desk if you can afford it. Laptops, that CPU running is like, zzz. that's why you also, when you sleep, turn your phone to airplane mode. If you don't believe me, go to Amazon, buy a high quality MF meter, Put it on Amazon uh, on non airplane mode, regular mode is blowing up the meter. Zzz, put it on airplane mode. It doesn't go to one, but it drops like a ton, like 60%. So you can still have like the, the LTE and 5G stuff. It's so that's all I was saying swimming, ocean. You know, you liked it. There's more than just the exercise, you got to look holistically at exercise. You know? Yeah. Jiu-jitsu is good for men to up your testosterone because on a subconscious autonomic system, your body thinks you're in battle with another man to the death. Your body, remember, always assumes the worst. It's not normal. In our past history, there's been 200 million generations, they think, of hominids, right? Our ancestors. Come and gone. And 100 billion people is the estimated. Ask Google. 100 billion people. Most of the time, when a dude grabbed you, he was trying to kill you, rob you, kill your family, take your possessions. So I like jujitsu because all of a sudden, like hitting the mitts on boxing does not emit the same testosterone response as a dude fucking grabs you by the shoulder and try to flip you over and get on top of you and ground and pound or break your arm or choke you out. So there was a guy here yesterday, a couple guys, one guy sold his company for 500 mil a makeup company. What was it called? Epsi or something? No, not Epsi. That's who bought him. But he brought another dude with him that was talking to me on the side. He's like, Ty, I'm struggling with testosterone. I was like, do you fucking engage in hand-to-hand combat with other men? He's like, nope. I'm like, that's free. 
You don't have to buy TRT replacements. You don't have to worry about messing up your body. You don't have to inject. I've seen people, my friend Zach had low, lower testosterone. I got him following me around, shadowing me, doubled, doubled. Yeah, it's wild. So I just started rolling probably like three months ago. Yeah. But the first time I did it was about four years ago. My buddy was like, hey, do you want to go and do like, you know, be JJ? And I was like, I don't know what that is, but like, yeah. let's give it a go. And so I'm like, what's it called? He's like, it's called The Farm. And I was like, great. Like, I'm going to go against these burly boys. You yeah. know, I'm a skinny guy. And so I get in there and the class has already started. And like for the first 15 minutes, they teach you like different positions, how to get out of it yeah. and all that. And then you start rolling. Yep. And so they just ring this bell and everyone like lines up on a wall. And then the other, you know, folks are like down, you know, in their little position. And they're like, everyone find a partner. And I'm like looking around and the only person's open is this girl. Yeah. And I was like, great. Like, I got to wrestle a girl. Like, yeah. I don't want to kick her ass. Like, I don't yeah, want to do this. She can, they can beat you. The uh, yeah. second I got down in the position, she like looks up at me and she goes, are you ready? Yeah. And I was like, oh. Um, Wait, with that voice, was she a woman? Yeah. I mean. If <laughs> she's like, yo, you ready? Like, God only it knows might, at this point. Like, it, the world's so weird now. Yeah. But that was my first introduction to it. And it was like very humbling. But in terms of like it being the most primal thing I've ever done. Yeah. Because I feel like it's. Like the high that I get after it is just ungodly. Yeah, it's you get major release endorphins. It's high intensity interval training. You spike the heartbeat up. I was talking to a guy, Brian Ortega. He's a UFC fighter. Mm -hmm. I have trained with him in Balls Root, and I used to train with. It's like there is a there is a only for a man. It's only created in hand to hand combat, and our ancestors engaged almost all of them in hand to hand combat. People don't realize the world used to be much more warlike murder rates in the 1500s were like 100x what they are now testosterone rates have dropped some people say that's bad the good thing is there's less murders we've been putting a lot of murders in prison for a long time and if you put murders in prison a long time they can't have kids so society has slowly culled out crazy high part of the reason that men have lower testosterone now is because of plastics microplastics are now in the heart they're in every cell now in people's body People, we sit too much. Ironically, I'm sitting. But part of it is we've also killed off and neutered and not allowed the highest testosterone men to reproduce. That's what prisons are. Remember, there was no prisons 1,000 years ago. Right. There was a dude who was crazy. You're like, ah, oh, that's if you're a Viking, you're like, yeah, that's, you know, Fezzik, the maniac dude. Keep him away from, but he's good when we go <laughs> and pillage another village. Bring Fezzik with us, yeah. but keep him away from your family because he might have a psychotic break. And, you know, these, they used to, what do they call them? They used to have these Vikings were known for this like schizoid rage they would go into and just smash everybody's skull in, you know, with a hammer. So when you were back in Sweden, you didn't like that guy hanging out, but he was great when you got on a boat and went to, you know, steal all the beautiful women from England. Yeah, when you needed him. Yeah, when you needed him, you <laughs> wanted, you know, Mongo and stuff. But now in society we live in now, if you had Mongo living in Manhattan, he'd be out here murdering people. So, you know, part of the testosterone drop is genetic. Some of it's environmental. Some of it's literally selective breeding. But what I was saying is still deep in our DNA, the majority of our life in terms of human life going back to let's say three i think the most recent estimates is modern humans about three hundred fifteen thousand years old if you go back three hundred thousand years ago and met your great grandpa he probably had engaged in combat with either another bank village man or like a mountain lion a bear there was a tribe in america where one of the rites of passages, there was dudes who had killed a grizzly bear in hand-to-hand -hand combat. One-on-one? -on -one. Oh, yeah. George Carlin, who is the one, not George Carlin, the comedian. There was another Carlin in the 1700s, who was a, but they didn't have fo photographs. He painted a lot of the famous people. And he was 1700s, late 1800s. And there, I forget what tribe it was, Arapaho or one of that. That was a rite of passage. The men who had a grizzly bear, they were allowed to like wear like the head of it. All the women wanted to, and they of wanted course. their children. Yeah. In, in Africa, there was a tribe, Manute Bull, who played pro basketball. He played on a tribe where a rite of passage, he killed a lion with a spear, hand to hand. Manute Bull, insane. he was seven foot seven. The crazy thing, seven foot seven, that's like 225 centimeters. 
The crazy thing is he was not the tallest guy in his family. His grandpa was seven foot 11. Oh and my. his son plays in the NBA right now and is kind of considered the short guy. And he's seven two. Bull, bull. Yeah, no, baby, he's only like six and 11. They're like, ah, oh. it's like, meet the small guy of the family. Yeah. He's six eleven. So there's levels to this hand to hand combat. You know, you got the Dinka level, you have the Native American. Yeah, the grizzly bears, they would tell a story. They would come in with a big knife. Imagine meeting a grizzly bear. <sighs> You had scars no. all on one swipe of a grizzly bear if you survive. Remember, back then, there's no cosmetic surgery. Yeah, you, I mean, if you, even if yeah. you get hit a little bit and, like, you're not going to die in today's society, you're dying yeah. back then. Yeah. You're toast. Well, if you go back further, homo sapiens were killing mammoths. And I don't know if you've ever seen a mad elephant. I saw a YouTube where an elephant, this is a crazy, you know, they're famous for good memories. A poacher killed an elephant mother's daughter. And this was all over the news. I think it was India. She found him in the, went in, I guess by smell. Wow. And went and killed him the next day in his sleep. Well, the elephant, elephants are known, what are they, pachinids or something? Pac it's like elephants, crows, crows yeah. and dolphins are crazy intelligent. Although now we're finding like flies. are. I sentient. just read something yeah. about that. Fly. I've been telling people, even if you're a vegetarian, Josh is vegan. Plants feel pain. Plants feel pain. That's the problem of being humans. We kill to eat because we can't eat minerals. We can't eat rocks. Only thing that can eat rocks is plants. They have the ability to, you know, they use photosynthesis and they use the roots attached and they can actually release acids and they eat a combination of rocks and soluble, you know, nitrites, all these kinds yeah. of things in the soil. So water soluble things, but plants feel pain. And when you mow your grass and you smell that freshly cut, that's how plants communicate that they're being cut. Really? They, they don't have vocal cords. When you cut down an apple tree, other apple trees come to the rescue and bring water for it in the roots because that tree can't get as much water. So everything alive is probably more sentient than we thought. We just don't have the ability to track it yet. Mm -hmm. But it's a crazy world. I'm reading the last known book of Stephen Hawking, which he couldn't quite finish because, you know, he's paralyzed and he slowly before he died. He died, I think, in 2016 or 18 or something. And he, he lost like he used to like blink to write books, but he, he lost even that ability. Dude, he was a big, he studied the multiverse as his final thing. So there can be a multiverse, parallel, simultaneous universe where plants are more alive than even humans. There's a pair, there's five, 10 to the 500 power parallel multiverses, which means just to put out a perspective how big that number is, it's, it's as close to, for humans, it means infinity because we can't fathom numbers mm -hmm. that big. 10, you took all the sand grain kernels or grains of sand on earth. And then every one of those had an earth with grains of sand and trillions of grains of sand. That's 10 to the 17th power. So 10 to the 500 power is infinity. So that's why I said that it's a, it's a weird world, but I try to figure out the rules for this multiverse. Now there is a question. Can you skip between multiverses, which you probably can. That's like manifesting. That's like prayer. That's like quantum entanglement, if you're more scientific. So mm -hmm. there's like a lot of, it's hard to know anything being true. You yeah, can just I mean, guess. My deal has always been like, people will ask me about like subjects like that. And I'm like, look, I'm not that intelligent to figure it all out. Like I just have to focus on what's in front of me. Right. You know, what's on this world that I can actually do. And, you know, yeah, but you're manifesting utility. stuff. You're like 24 and you have a hundred people working for your insurance agency. And you did, you told me you netted a little under a mil. That's a lot of, more than 500,000 under a mil puts you in the, look, in America, if you make 400,000, you're in the one percentile. And America is already essentially the richest country in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a few minor, Scandinavia, and, but you take, but generally, if you're in the 1% of America, you're in the 100th of 1%. So you're already, and you're way more than 400,000. So... You already manifest. It's not about being, nobody's smart. 
compared to the size of the universe. Right. Like people go, Ty, are you smart? I'm like, compared to who? Compared to that dude? Probably. Compared to universal thought, you, no one's even a grain of sand. It's just too, it's too guys like Stephen Hawking are like, ah, every, the more you learn, then the more that brain just expands, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, well, I was looking at something. I don't know if this stat is right, but they're saying like the top 1%, if you look at it in the full world, is like mm -hmm. roughly 50,000 a year. Yeah, not, yeah, in the world. In yes. the whole world. Oh, sure. In Brazil, I was just in Sao Paulo. I went to the favelas of Brazil. I was there for a little bit. And it's like poor. The average, like 70% of Sao Paulo or, or Brazilians, not just Sao Paulo, make under $300 a month. So if you're out here making 400,000, they don't, it, it's like, what? Yeah. They're making two to 3,000 a year. Yeah, that's just nuts. And so I was in uh, Tijuana, Mexico on Sunday. And it was so crazy when I was crossing the border with my buddy is we started, you know, seeing people pedal just like juice and you know, yeah. food and chips. And the next thing you know, I like look up and there's like these two tiny dogs and the guy's like, you know. Selling you dogs? And they're like these tiny little dogs. And then the next thing you know, I see this guy and he's carrying a baby. And I was like, if this guy is trying to oh, sell a baby yeah. right now, there's yeah. no way. And like, Did he? Well, I didn't want to roll down my window because I'm like, this is just going to be yeah. heartbreaking. You don't even want to know because I was going to be like that happens. Quanto Cuesta, like yeah. how much out of curiosity? Yeah, like third world country. There, it's a bad thing out of the world. There's some crazy. There's some dark sides to the world. I'm like, you know what? When people start telling me about it, I'm like, I believe you. Yeah, but I don't know that I want to know. Yeah, because you can just get your brain thrown out of whack to the point where you're like, hmm. This is too dark. Too dark. And too what was dark. interesting is the second you cross into America, yeah. it's just night and day, black and white difference. But America has dark things happening, but not like Mexico, like on the street. It's all underground. America has the dark stuff that's happening. Also, some of the American stuff is structural. You have big lobbyists that control a lot of things. You have a lot of politicians that should be there for the good of the people, but they're really narcissists so mm -hmm. they mostly they're like 80 percent consider now in their conscious mind i do believe a lot of politicians care about people but if you look in the unconscious behaviors they don't behave in the way that's good for people because at the end of the day homo sapiens humans we're not built to be unselfish it takes training to be unselfish and some of it's genetic some people are naturally more unselfish than others but people who want to be politicians are people who seek power and people who seek power have more dark triad traits mm. narcissism psychopathy machiavellianism sadism lower on what's called fairness sincerity modesty these are like uh hexaco traits so you get low on agreeableness higher on deception virtue signaling so it's like yeah Mexico has dark stuff, but Mexico also has some things better than America. People are like family oriented. So it's like, you know, third world, the thought of like first world countries, third world countries is not the right way to think about the world. There's places, part of them, what makes America so wealthy, we have crazy natural resources. People don't understand America can feed itself. Mm hmm. Like Mexico cannot, I drive to Mexico. It's mostly desert land. It has some fertile places. I've been there like Naranjo, Monterrey, stuff like that. But a lot of Mexico, you can't grow enough food. You don't have enough oil. Yeah, America has oil. You know, we pulled off a, a fast one. It was called Seward's Folly. You know, we, we got Alaska. We bought it from Russia for nothing. Russia got screwed. Russia's like, here, you want this huge Alaska thing? Well, so I think it got sold for the equivalent of, was it $8 million a bit? It was some ridiculous All of thing. Alaska? Dude, look, look, you want to know the greatest? What is the greatest investment in human history? When America tricked Russia into selling it <laughs> Alaska for, let me ask, I forget oh, that. that's funny. Chat GPT, how much did America buy Alaska for? And what's been the ROI when you count the oil? Watch this number. It's insane. Ameri it became a state in, I think, 49, 1949, but it was, per we paid 7.2 million, two cents an acre with just the oil. Okay. 
In just the past few decades, we've made 180 billion. Oh my God. So just oil in the last few years, we have made 2.5 million percent return. So all you gotta do if you wanna make money, where's the next Alaska that you can get where's somebody the land to sell? Grabs? Because until oil was valuable, Alaska was not valuable because that's why there was a guy named Seward. He was a U.S. government official. He was like, we should buy this thing. And people were like, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. And for years he was made fun of, but he turned out to be right because first they found gold. And then years later in the early 19th. So watch this. Count all the assets that all the cash flow that's been pulled out of Alaska, food, mineral, gold. Oil. Now what's the return on investment? It's mind blowing. That Seward guy got, that just shows you, you could be hated on for your whole life. And when you die, people realize you were a genius. They realize you were a genius. Watch this. The total estimated revenue from Alaska <laughs> is 550 <laughs> billion, half a trillion. So that puts the return on investment at 76 million, 388 and 889 percent. Nothing has been greater. It's and the, the man ROI. who invested in that was made fun of, I think until he died, was Seward, they called it Seward's folly. Was he ever vindicated in his lifetime? for his idea that America should buy Alaska from Russia? Let's see. Because I want you to know, sometimes you will only be a genius after you're dead. Yeah. You're too early. You're too early. Yeah, it was made fun of. In, he bought in 1867, they called it Seward's Ike's Box, or Seward's Folly. And when he died, he died in 1872. They discovered gold eight years after that that's why i said suck. for those of you who have a truly pioneering idea tesla was like that um you see it with somebody like seward many people in history have been mocked in their time socrates was poisoned he not only wasn't there they made him commit suicide they're like you're making our society unstable with your truth mm -hmm. so socrates had truth and they made him drink hemlock so i, I tell people it's like just because people make fun of you doesn't mean you're wrong. You just might be early. Yeah. It was eight years at Seward's grandkids. If he was my grandpa, I'd be fucking hunting people down. I'd be like, you should make fun of my grandpa, bitch. <laughs> Who made $200 million for the U.S. this year? Right. Fuck you. Kick you in the balls. <laughs> Boom, you're next. I hunted you down. You made fun of my grandpa. My grandpa was right. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, if the world was fair, there'd be like a vindication thing that happens. That would be awesome. But no, I feel like it's also just a part of like being lucky too. You know, some people like are on the stance of like, there's no such thing as luck. And I'm like, there 110% is, you know, like you get lucky with who you meet or what you find like that gentleman. I don't know if he researched Alaska, for yeah. example, and like found it, but obviously like, what was the return? $760 million. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. It's a number that you can't fathom. Have you been up to Alaska? I've only flown over it, and, and I can't remember if I stopped there once, but I'd like to go. I flew up there, dude. The only place I've ever, I don't get scared easy. Mm -hmm. Only place I've ever been scared in my life in an airplane was flying over the Arctic Circle. Okay, that makes sense. Because you look over the Arctic Circle, you're like, if we go down, don't, don't send a radio signal. Don't send a black box. Nobody finding you. Nobody's helping. You are a goner. Yeah. If that plane lands, you're dead in 15 minutes. There's nothing there. Yeah. It's cr the true Arctic. Like when you fly from like Iceland to Helsinki, Finland, it, it's a great, those Icelandic people, that's a unique country. There's only 250,000 Icelandic people. My experience with them, they're awesome people and they're a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And I know why, because imagine surviving. It's the most Northern latitude major city in the world. It's like, what is it? 60, 160 or 63, 68. What is the latitude? What's the latitude of Reykjavik? It's a crazy north. And they used to live there before modern civilization. Yeah, 64. Yeah. 64 north. And so you're up there and you're going, I was there and I was there in the summer. And uh, sun goes down at 12.15 midnight and comes up at 12.45 you get to sleep for 30 minutes. My friend didn't bring tape. And after three days, I'm like, bro, you don't look so good. 
I was like, are you hungover from drinking? He's like, I can't sleep. He's like the sun. <laughs> and I say, do you, he's like, yeah, I like to keep my curtains open. I'm like, this is Iceland. When I get there, I travel with assistants. I'm like, they know the first job when I land in the North Sweden, or they got black duct tape. We don't rely on anything with her. We're, we're, she's putting black duct tape over everything. Cause yeah, he looked like a, a man dying in front of me after four days in Iceland with the curtains out. You just can't sleep. He's like, I've slept 14 minutes in the last three days. Man. Dude, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, he was like all wired out. I had to send my assistant to his hotel. I was like, this dude, yeah. I was like, cause you know, if you don't sleep long enough, you get a heart attack a lot of times. You just, something happens, you die. Yeah. You know, most people die after like, if you try to stay awake like seven days, you start, your chance of dying goes up like a hundred X. So I was like, I think this dude might die. I'm like, I I the guy the guy, black come hang there. with me. And he's like 30. I'm like, he's going to die of that. The doctors be like, natural causes. It was, it was like sunlight. He died of sunlight, <laughs> Iceland sunlight. <laughs> well, the first time I ever went to Alaska, so I didn't know that about the summers because it's the same yeah. deal in Alaska, but I think it's like three hours. But one, it's actually never dark. Like it's yeah, just yeah. a in dust. The very north. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were running a competition of like who could sell more. And it was like me and some buddies out there. And it was like 930 at night. And then they go up, you know, by a thousand dollars or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I might as well just go knock on some doors. Yes. And so I'm driving through this neighborhood to a lady that, you know, never picked up the phone. And when I get to her house, I see her outside and she's like 68 years old, just mowing the lawn. And I was like, dude, this is fabulous. Like I can sell all yeah. night, you know, and so I end up she's sitting mowing down the it. lawn at one in the morning. I was like, this is great. You know, and there's a different type of energy that it comes with, but you're bringing up, you but know, Alaska is some crazy people. Remember a lot of people used to move to Alaska when they murdered somebody in America, because basically it was hard for the law before modern DNA stuff. It's just a plan. You just moved to right. Alaska. You killed somebody in Montana. You killed somebody in the Midwest. They're like, well, you get on this boat in San Francisco, you make your way up to Juneau, people move. That's why it's, it, it's a little dangerous of a place. It to is a little day. wild. You, it's a wild man yeah. place. It's a little wild. So I did this thing, and this will all make sense, this story. So my first year in business, I got really burnt out, right? Yeah. And everyone talks about like, oh, like if you don't, you know, if you have a good vision, you don't get burnt out. I'm like, ah, you know, debatable, right? But I was like, let me do this rule called live like Larry. So once okay. a month, I'll always do something I've always wanted to do. So Who's Larry like, though? Larry I don't Bird? know. I just kind of like okay, it. Just, just live it like Larry. It's nothing okay. else behind it. But uh, anyway, so we go up to Alaska and I was like, dude, there's a glacier like 30 minutes south. Yeah. I was like, why don't we ride, you know, like ATVs or something like that? So we find a little, you know, shop and we go in there and we, you know, book a tour. And the guy that's uh, touring us around, he looks like a Viking. He's like six, seven, probably 260. Yeah. And I was like, this guy's perfect. So we're doing our deal and we- He pulled. might have killed before. <laughs> he probably you had, you had the murder yeah. trail, trailblazer. He's like, he was come great. on, come on, murder ink trails. He's like, come on here in the woods. If I don't like you, I'm gonna keep you in <laughs> <Yeah>. the woods. <laughs> and so we pull up to this glacier and he's like, you boys wanna hop in? Oh, that's cool. And I'm like, I'm like, are you being serious? He's like, yeah, we'll yeah. light a fire in the full nine yards. And I look at my buddies and one of my guys goes, he's like, dude, when else are you gonna be in Alaska and hop in like glacier water? And so I was like, just out of curiosity, like when we hop in there, like how long do we got? Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, how long do we got? He's like, after like a minute and like 30 seconds, he's like, you're going to completely freeze. Yeah. And I was like, all right, dude, I'm like, I'm going to hop in there, get in and out. But it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Yeah. Glacier water. I've been in a glacier. That water is, it's also like gray. Yeah. Well, it's, it's from the gray. salt and everything too. So and it also can't, the rocks. Yeah. And yeah. it can't freeze. Yeah. You know, it is cold water. You jump in it. I, I did not jump in, but I put my hand in. All these people are like, I like to do cold ice baths. I'm like, glacier. <laughs> glacier. When you cut a hole in the ice, the ice has insulated the water. It's not as cold as glacier water. Is. Yeah. It's if, different. Let me see if my hypothesis is right. Is glacier water colder than just water in a lake that froze over that you cut a hole in? It's a good question. I have no idea if this theory might be The totally glacier wrong. water he was saying was about like 30 degrees. And at some point it can't get below, you know, 50. Because then it'll all freeze. Yes. I'll tell you, I've cut a hole in ice, put my hand in. It was not as cold as a glacier. But maybe that's just my, yeah, it says, it, it might just be my anecdotal experience. But uh, go up to Iceland. There's a glacier. Just realize you probably ain't coming back. 
your little Instagram video is going to turn into Instagram <laughs> faces of death video. Yeah. <laughs> people jump in that and then they just have shock and they just go under. They're, they're done. Yeah. Don't do it unless you want to die. And then don't, don't mess with Iceland when they got to pull you out. Yeah. On a yeah, dark never note been over for the podcast, Europe. on a dark note, as we end with it, let's <laughs> let end with some positivity. Okay. Cold ice bath is good for you. Oh, oh, let's do it in a controlled environment. Although I will tell you all the science on cold, hot jacuzzis has almost as much science. You said a jacuzzi? Cold. Yeah, like hot. People are over talking about cold. I'll give you an example. Let's just chat GPT. What has more science on health benefits? Cold water, plunges, or jacuzzis? List out some of the top science and which one has better science on it. By the way, they're different. So ideally, you're doing both. But if you had to pick one, you know, the question is, everybody talks about, um, here we go. It's giving me, let me tell it. To, sometimes you got to tell it. Give me the short answer. See, there's crazy science substantial body of research cardiovascular health study regular use of hot tubs improves cardiovascular health by lowering blood pressure muscle relaxation stress reduction these are all studies like this is american journal of physiology 2016 these aren't like some of these science is like 1942 science mm -hmm. you know see we which has start. better science jacuzzis generally have more established research in traditional medical context Cold water plunges have a growing body of research, but I'm just saying, and it might turn out that cold plunges, but I don't see anybody talking about jacuzzis and it's a big mistake. It's was, crazy how, you know, Richard Dawkins coined the real word meme. It's not like a funny video. The real word meme was invented, partially made popularized by the scientist named Richard Dawkins, so who I interviewed on my first podcast in like 2012. And it means genes that are not physical. Like, you know, you get the genes from your mom, your dad, your eye color. So there are ideas that spread for no reason. Mm. Sometimes they're false. And there's a, there's a, again, cold water is great for you, but there's 2 trillion videos on cold water and there's actually more science on hot water. And you don't see it anywhere. Anywhere, it just shows you that Good ideas, but not always the best ideas go viral. People ask me, what's the best books to read? I'm like, nothing on the New York Times bestseller. My go-to books are like things that have passed the test of time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just finished Einstein's general theory of relativity. You go down to Barnes & Noble, there are science books that are like, you know, $40 hardcover, amazing new one. I'm like, bro, you think this guy's smarter than Einstein? To me, read Einstein first. Then it's like, there's all these pop psychology books. I'm like, read Civilization's Discontents by Freud first. He invented psychology. Imagine single-handedly, not literally, but one of the pioneers of a whole field. So the, the things that go viral are not always the best. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you and know? there's a lot of fads that go on that work for maybe six months or even four or five years. Yeah. But I think it's important to like look and be like, all right, who do you take advice from? Because yes. if they haven't been doing it for 10, 15, even 20, 30 years, it's like, do they really know how to manage the money? Did that only work for that season? Right. right? You're talking about for business. Yeah, yeah. Same thing. I mean, in anything, really. Yes. But there's also you, the good thing about science, good science or bad science, good science, good science controls for variables. Like, for example... The guy who said rocket sports, badminton, tennis, you know, pickle racquetball, ball. pickleball, that this is the best for anti-aging based on bad science because did they control for the fact that that's things rich people do and rich people live less stressful lives, therefore tend to live longer than people are grinding it out. And so now maybe it is good science. I haven't looked into it, but I, I there's a crazy amount of science showing people who live the longest don't play racquetball. I, I, I've never seen a bot. But mm -hmm. on Instagram, that's going viral today. I just mm -hmm. saw it. And I was like, wait a second. It, anecdotally, by far the healthiest sport I've seen for anti-aging is surfing. Dudes or women who surf look young. You know, there was, there's, a, there's a, you can buy it at any health store. It's called Bragg's Liquid Aminos. You probably use it because you're vegan. Have you ever used Bragg's? 
It's like, it's like a replacement to soy sauce. Anyway, I think Bragg died surfing at 98 in a surfing accident. He oh like got gosh. hit in the head. Yeah, surfer dude, because surfing is the perfect, it gets shoulders, it, you're up, it gets a little bit of physical like push up. Mm -hmm. You get in flow state for meditation, no EMFs, vitamin D from the sun, water, you usually wake up early. So it's like a cluster of behaviors surfing forms, forces you to do. And so, and you're, so it's not just the cardio. It's not just the anaerobic hypertrophy of getting muscle growth. It's like everything in one. Yeah. So that's why I'm always like suspicious. I'm like, cold water, jacuzzi, dude. And, and for sure, after you lift weights, you shouldn't do cold plunge right away. It doesn't, it seems like the science, it, you could do it, you do it on your off days. Really? So if you lift, yeah, because you don't want to cool. You've heated yourself up and for hypertrophy, muscle growth, in general, you don't want to freeze it right away. But it's great. Cold is, of course, great for some things, you know? So you do it more in your off days. Yeah, like for your joints and everything. Uh, this, this house here has an outdoor and an indoor pool. And I fill it up with ice and it has a sauna. Another thing that's crazy health benefits, sauna. That's the best. I love Steam the sauna, room man. too. I have hot jacuzzi, cold plunge, sauna, steam room. I'm blessed here at this house. You know, I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any money, you take a barrel. You Horse fill it trough. with cold. <laughs> you, you take an acetylene <laughs> torch and you heat up another barrel of water. And, you know, for a steam room, you, I don't know. You, you, get, you buy a humidifier at Home Depot and stick it in a closet. And for a sauna, you put some wood together and put some finished hot rocks and just pour water on that and get that dry heat, you know, or you're going go to get a video Springs. of someone that builds these, somebody can build yeah. them. They're going to be like, dude, check this out. No excuses. I work out with a dude sometimes and I saw his original video is huge, like muscles and he's all natural too. And he lives in Africa and mm -hmm. they were poor. So he just like had like rocks or pieces of concrete yeah. combined. His name is Samuel Kubala. You can find him on Instagram. Dude, this guy has definition. So it's not always the fanciest equipment that gets you there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and those it's funny. I've seen videos like that and the weights look so yeah. big. Yeah. It's like they're lifting like 180 pounds, but it's yes. really like 40 pounds at that point. Well, no, this dude, yes, I've seen those and fake weights, some people do. That's a good prank to do. Go in the gym, put on 600 pounds of fake weights and just <laughs> snatch Rep it up it with out. one hand. Yeah. I'm training for the Olympics. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Tylopez.com slash Wiley. For those of you who want to learn like lead gen, building a hundred person phone sales, we'll have a link to your Insta, your website and all that stuff. If you want to sell for, for them, Tylopez.com slash Coyote. C-O-Y-O-T-E. Wiley Coyote. There we My go. Man, we got a, the name of a new brand. Let's get it rolling. Has come out, pal.